I was working in the basement late one night when my eyes beheld a podcast site. (laughs) For my podcast from his... Uh, I can't do this. I can't do it. I'm bailing out, guys. All right, well, maybe I could do it. Uh, yeah, you want to try? Sure. Okay. Oh, so you're improvising. Oh, no shit. I just can't read it off the paper. You're yeah. stupid, Jane. I'm not reading the fucking lyrics of the Monster Mash. I'm making it about the podcasting. podcast mash. Well, I understand that, but I thought, never mind. It was a graveyard smash. October. This is Boss Bale Radio, video game music edition, number whatever. Hey, it's the spookiest time of the year. I'm Griffin Hopp, and with me is Gene Silver Jr. Hey, yo. Power stance. Look at that. Planting. Man, Two spreading. socks. Two different colors. Two socks. different socks. Everybody has two socks. Unless you're a hobo like Colin Connett. It's still September. No. Shut up, Colin. Do you think I'm going to edit, edit this in September? If you're not lazy, you will. No, uh, fair point. <laughs> you got me there. Ah, uh, well. But it's late one night in the podcast lab. It's fair. And I'm tired. That's fair. So we're here to talk about spooky things because it's the spooky month where everybody changes their Twitter profiles and... Spooky, scary skeletons. <laughs> and thinks pumpkins are good to eat. <laughs> well, you don't like a pumpkin spice long thong? Long. I, I don't know. Okay. Pumpkin spice Long John Silvers? Mm. Oh, no. Pumpkin spice hush puppies. That might be something. I think that we just shouldn't eat any Long John Silvers food. Fair enough. Uh, uh, Do we call it, qualify it food? Well, I mean, nothing scarier than eating at Long John Silvers and then wondering whether you're going to shit your fucking pants or not. I don't know. Waffle so, House is pretty terrifying. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, anything with the name Bistro at the Cheesecake Factory. I'll <laughs> Pro tip. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Better put that freaking roll on high and wipe the back of your legs. All right. Well, listener, get ready to wipe the back of your legs as you shit yourself in scaredness as we uh, roll out our favorite spooky songs. Uh, we got a list of nine in total, starting with the least spooky to the spookiest. Uh, somehow continuing to not commit to any sort of formatting methodology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that requires... Effort. <laughs> and remembering what we did last time. Yes. If only Hopkins. somebody recorded it. <laughs> and if only there was not these wonderful liquids we're drinking. Uh, right. So let's jump into the list. Um, what do we have first? Go for and, it, Jane. Oh, me? All right. Well, the f- one that I would like to play first is I seem to always pull from this game because this game has amazing music pretty much throughout. It's Secret of Mana. It's one of these songs that you run into going into one of the spooky-ass temples. And I remember playing this game and thinking, wow, this is a very colorful, very joyful, very like carefree environment. And then you enter this misty, spooky, zombie-filled temple, and this music starts blaring. I'm like, oh, oh no. Prepare this to get place spooked. is spooky. All right, you want to give the name of the track and we'll play it? Oh, I believe it is Ceremony. Ceremony. <laughs>
I just think it's it's it almost sounds like some kind of music in some evil temple where they're summoning something very naughty. I don't know what's so spooky about chimes, but chimes are spooky. Chimes are always spooky. Spooky chimes. Chimes, you've got that weird like I don't know. Uh, what's uh what is the first time you encountered the song? Do you remember? Uh well in Secret Amanda, you're supposed to go to this place after you get your get Meryl, I believe. Okay. So fairly early. Uh, kind of. Like you go to Gaia or Gaia's novel or whatever, then you can go to the forest. But I remember going to the forest, getting Meryl, and then somehow getting in there before I should have, so everything just whooped my ass. Mm. And I was like, well, that's terrifying. I'm going to come back later. Was that the forest area where you need the whip, or was it... No, uh, it's... Uh, so you've got the... Was it Pandora or Pandora, whatever that like major kingdom is that you yeah. first run to do? It's uh-huh. just Pandora. south of there, right. and then you loop around, and then there's that temple. Which ends up being a shrine, I think, right? Like, there's the fire tiger or something no, in there there's nope. no shrine that's where you first run into like thanos because meryl's chasing after deluxe <sighs> got it okay that's right or thanatos or whatever his name is mm-hmm. tm 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 <laughs> okay uh call you want to take the next one so my first choice uh first or it, third or which uh, one? Uh, third my third this is my third choice Soft my first X. choice for my third <laughs> is from an obviously spooky uh spoopy game uh or game series castlevania Obviously, is a go-to for any uh, amount of spooky Spook music. Fan. Kind of surprised I didn't get anything from Castlevania. I know it is strange. Uh, this is from Symphony of the Night. I do not remember where you encounter this song in the game, but the song is "Dance oh. of Pales." Oh, and that's in like the main hall. The main hall. It's very spooky. Prepare to be spooked. Haunting. Ooh. It spooked me right out of my chair. I saw that. We almost lost Griff there. The buildup almost got me. Gene? I think it does a great Did job. Did you pee yourself? Uh. Is that out of the front of the back? Oh. Oh no. Uh, yep, both. <laughs> that was the best of us. I, I, I. I'm not spooked. I'll be honest with you. I'm. I'm feeling eerie. I'm feeling like if there was a bunch of like undead people dancing around a ballroom right now that would be very appropriate waltzes are spooky this is a little spooky but i'm not feeling spooky well fortunately we're looking for eerie spooky ominous scary music good okay well i'm <laughs> glad you had those clarifiers on there Ooh. i think it does a great job it makes me yeah. think there's this this like masquerade ball that's going on and all these aristocrats are dancing around but when you get to that second like verse it's just slightly off key enough to be like, this is very unnerving of this situation. All right when I fell, almost fell out of my chair. That's I was kind of illustrating that point of oh something, some, something's going to happen. That was the the climactic spoopiness mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or eeriness or eeriness. eeriness. IBS. It is eerie. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> right. Yo, cover up for us, Griffy. Hi, Griff. Hey, you what's your number three slash one? Uh, first number three. First number three. Well, so this one, much like uh, Collins, is probably the more controversial pick. I don't know if I'd say it's quickly, eerie, spooky, whatever. Um, 
(laughs) (laughs) But what it is, is something that is related to skeletons and death and... A sweet scarf. Difficulty and microwave spaghetti. So, I'm just going to play this song. So as we all know, that is a song from Undertale, uh, con- called Bone Trossel. Uh, the uh, the theme song to the fight against um, the uh, the skeletal brother uh, known as Papyrus. And though it may not be inherently eerie or spooky, I think in terms of a boss fight and in that collection of music, it is one of those that does have some dissonance in there. I think there's like a certain like like comedic spookiness to it. I was about to say, I, it's I, not like spooky scary. It's like Casper the Friendly Goaf getting yeah. into a pie fight with all of his other ghost friends spooky, where it's spooky, but it's silly. It's this spooky is, like this Scooby-Doo. Is spooky to it's, me. it's Scooby-Dooky. This yeah. is spooky to me in the same way that like Mad Monster Mansion is spooky to me in Banjo-Kazooie. <laughs> where it's kind of a silly spookiness. You didn't put that on the list? No, I sure didn't. Oh, swing and a miss. Well, maybe there's still time. I choose. I chose only the scariest spoopiness for my list. <laughs> we didn't listen. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Undertale music, of course, fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. Always very, good. Very yeah. good soundtrack. And I'm, I, I just kind of wanted to showcase that one as like you can be a spooky song without being like an oppressively eerie and menacing, foreboding spooky song. And I just want to put Undertale on the list. We have something from this fucking century. No, don't worry. I have something from this century. Oh, good segue. It's my number two. Number two. Oh, it all oh that's so up. good. <laughs> so this is from The Witcher 3, and it's probably one of my favorite tracks on here. And it is the theme music of some of the more menacing individuals you run into through the character through the course of the game. There's uh, witches, otherwise known as the crones or the, the ladies of the wood, who are very, very evil. And you don't ever actually see their form until later, but you interact with them for a while through kind of an intermediary. And every time you interact with them, you hear this song. But my favorite part about it, this song is already creepy enough, but the way they reveal their actual true forms to you while this song is playing is just... Ooh, that sounds really cool. It's creepy as hell. So uh, without further ado, this is Ladies of the Wood. Mm. (laughs) Hmm.
So yeah, um, I feel that this is kind of like it, running to these individuals and hearing this music. It makes you think of almost like an old magic kind of Cthulhu scariness. Where the yeah, it, it creeps me out. Is is the reveal of them when that vocal track kicks in and it's kind of like, uh, like yelling? No, when you first hear this song, you run into a kind of a hag in the woods who's taking care of these orphans, and she ends up being possessed by them to speak to you, and then they release her. Uh, when so this song plays happens during the best of us, right? This song plays that whole scenario, then you're like, man, this is really creepy. Oh, and then later same song is playing and you see these just hideous creatures march around from this house and you're like ooh that's messed up hmm. this didn't creep me out but it might be like you were saying where it's just spookier in the context of the game absolutely I I am actually getting some creepy vibes and I really like like I said when the 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 this that's happening right now with that that background vocal that's just kind of like yelling I like yeah. that a lot <laughs> But it's, it, I don't know, I, it fits so well with that scene because it's, I don't know, I, I play the game, get, get the weird, creepy vibes and those hideous things crawl out and eat the children. <gasps> Spoilers! The children! Well, it depends on what you do. They so may, many child deaths. All right. Next up to bat is... So my second choice is... Your is your second, your number two number seven? Yes. Two this is two. my second number two. Okay, excellent. Second from the first. I chose Lavender Town from first gen Pokemon, but uh, I think a lot of people generally agree that eh, Lavender Town is pretty unsettling and kind of creepy, which I get, but I think that the original score is just kind of just more noisy than an actual music track, really. Mm. But so I chose uh, oh, cool. an orchestral arrangement by okay. this gentleman, Vanitas. I choose you. Who you could probably find on SoundCloud or something similar. Or but, in, co- uh, in, court, in a court near you. <laughs> in a court near you. <laughs> this is... Uh, How many face tattoos does go, Chiba, copy, Chiba right? have? <laughs> this is way creepier and spoopier. I and choose scarier. you plagiarism. Okay. And we're going to listen to it. Here we go. That's a creepy looking Cubone. It's a Marowak. Whatever. <laughs> Sufficiently spooked. The handbells. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, when those things come in, those are real good. Yeah. Very slow, very somber, very very much like Michael Myers just slowly walking towards you. And then you're dead. And he just somehow keeps getting closer. <laughs> so and I pulled closer. up here too. Uh, let's just compare and contrast that with uh, the other Pokemon original mm-hmm. things. So you can get that. What that or- orchestral version is bringing to the table. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like this is far more spooky. You think so? I don't think so. I think the other one is really good. I don't know. I mean, I, like, this is spooky, but like... I feel like the eh. other sounds nicer, but this... I don't know. It sounds spooky to me. Maybe it's because I, when I was younger and six and playing games that used this type of, uh, of software and creating music for some terrifying games, and that'll be my number one on my pick, but... I feel like this is a bit spookier to me. Well, you're entitled to your shitty opinion. Absolutely. I, like, <laughs> I really like the orchestral version. I love the handbells. I like how full it sounds. And I mean, it is this song, but built up into like a modern uh, soundscape. This is spoopy. And it Agreed. was spoopy when I first played it, when I was like 10 years old or whatever. Like, for sure. There is spooky, yo. Mm-hmm. It's spooky as Pokemon Go. <laughs> yeah. All right, Griff. No, no, that's the question. Who's who's the spookiest Pokemon? The spookiest Pokemon? Uh-huh. Oh no. Uh Magikarp. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, I don't know many outside of the first two generations, but uh I guess Golbatosaurus. It has to be my oh, favorite no. my favorite new Pokemon from generation 14 or whatever we're on. Automon. <laughs> uh he evolves into Recliner Mon, probably. <laughs> lazy, Sounds like the next Transformer. Lazy Boy! <laughs> lazy Boy! Oh, that was the third evolution. Lazy Boy! It's Mega Lazy Boy! Mega Lazy Boy, dude. <laughs> Coming to a theaters next to you, a Transformers and Pokemon shitty crossover by Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that Cubone or Marowak was definitely the saddest Pokemon. I don't know. I think those were it. only sad and spooky because of they Lavender their mother's Town. face? Yeah. Like just because of the Lavender Town thing, right? Oh, I like, thought it was that because that was what Lavender Town was centered around. Was that the Cubone and the the Marowak was the mother that was dead or whatever? He and wears his mother's face. He ate it. It's so spooky. Oh, that's pretty weird, man. What about what about just like Haunter? He's literally a ghost named Haunter. Yeah, that's pretty spooky. If you were to dig up those old Pokemon uh, descriptions, to be like it eats children's ge- dreams, and yeah. you're like, oh god, what? Being a child in the Pokeverse must be difficult. Yeah, that's not good. Yep. Okay. What's my dumb number two pick? Uh, apparently, it is the uh, opening theme from <laughs> Xenosaga. Yeah, this is an interesting choice. I, I don't know if I remember what this is. Yeah, same here. Let's find out together. <laughs> oh, Billy. Thank you. 
So yeah, uh, it's definitely another one of those Ooh. spooky tracks that don't really build to any grandiose conclusion, mm-hmm. which I think is kind of why I really like it. And it's also a Yatsunari Mitsuda track, which has that f- that Xeno flavor, because uh, it is from the game Xeno Saga. Uh, I just kind of like its progression. I like that it is a little haunting, a little unearthly, but there's also that like technological kind of flourish. Mm-hmm. Like there's that that like. I don't know, like chittering or something like that. That that yeah, reminds some beeps me and of some boops in there. Beeps and bloops, absolutely. Yeah. Um, like uh, like looking down a hall of ancient computers that uh, are just kind of like inert, but potentially still functioning and producing things. Um, I feel spooky. Like the feeling that I get is less spooky and more like awe. But awe can be kind of a sense of spooky where you're mm. in an old place. There's some old stuff here, and you I probably get like shouldn't a, be there. I get like a more ominous, right? right. Kind of yeah. impending doom. Sure. Feel doom. Doom. Zeno doom. Zeno doom. Zeno oh, bad doom. game. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, another one that wasn't on like the oppressive scale uh, of scary, spooky, uneerie, un-ear- but uh, definitely um, on the on the more melancholy, odd side. And I think paving the way for our rock block of Mitsuda stuff coming up here shortly. Mm-hmm. Which, we got uh, it coming. Before we get to that, Gene, you ready? Um, unless you chose uh, Xeno Gears, <laughs> my number three, number one. Number three, number one, number one, number three. So, this is a game that came out in 1992 or four. One of those. It's called The Immortal. And I was six years old about playing this game. And I have had nightmares most of my life from some of the stuff I've I've played in this game. And some of the music ties into these very eerie situations. Mm. And... I'll just go ahead and let the music play and I'll describe more of what the game's like once you listen to this creepy as hell music. So, that is, it's a very simple, very repetitive track, but much of this game, you're a wizard, except minus all the cool wizard stuff, so you don't really cast fireballs or do any cool stuff. You just get murdered by everything in very gruesome and very horrifying ways. You're a very shitty wizard. And this song is called Spores because you have to, you find these spores, like a bag of just fungal spores. If you plant them in the wrong place, you die. They burst up into mushrooms and then your body explodes like a pinata and for a six-year-old to see that it's pretty remembering memorable remembering, remembering? <laughs> i don't know i don't know it, it's it's just very haunting because when you hear these we, there's very music tied to certain events in the game and you hear this and you're like oh shit i need to be very careful in this room because everything that kills me normally there's more stuff in here that i'm not aware of that's going to kill me and one of the like one of the the tent poles of this game was that there's like sudden death around every corner. Oh, right? absolutely. Everything kills you. Very gruesome <laughs> death. It's not just like, oh, I fell off a cliff. No, it's I got impaled and I'm impaled, but now I'm twitching and now I'm dead. Oh, so it's like um, Tomb Raider, the new ones. I don't, I haven't seen those because they, I don't know. It's almost like if Eli Roth Hostel made a game. And made an old man with an oversized yarmulke run around in it. <laughs> I don't know, a wizard hat or whatever. It's not like a pointy one. It's just a. a it really looks like an oversized yeah, pair. Well, you know, you get to a certain age, you don't need the pointy hat anymore. You're not going to take the medicine. You're just going to kind of accept it. You know, you don't. Students, your heart I mean, condition if, doesn't if allow for it. Every ridiculous puzzle in the game, you still end up leaving with some princess girl. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's weird. It's a very strange game. It will either like get saved by the princess and then ride off the sunset, or you get saved by this big burly goblin guy and you both. Oh, now the we're sunset. talking. Oh, it sounds like Metal Gear Solid. Uh, <laughs> Metal Gear. Metal Gear. Are you 
Colin, you said you played this game on the NES. Mm-hmm. Did is there? I'm sure there's a striking difference in. I I just made a comment to him about that when it started. It's. Would you like to share it with the class? Do you want to look up the same song? Sure. For the. If for you the can NES version for me here a second. Absolutely. Like I remember look because I mm-hmm. I didn't because re- I only played it on the Genesis. I never knew it actually came out for the NES mm-hmm. until I still have the the cart for the NES version. But like looking at the animations and the graphics and the music compared to the NES, it is one hell of a different game i mean it's the same game but it is striking how different they are from that aspect alone i mean you when you played it did it scare the hell out of you as a a youngster it was a scary game also the box art is way different though that is very true i didn't even notice that you got creepy old man boy on there yep oh there he is oh um let me look this is ending we want spores spores how about unknown track, unknown track, unknown track, unknown or track? Or really just kind of any of them. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay, we'll give this one a shot. All right. That is the theme. That is actually mm-hmm. spooky in its own right, but that's a hell of a difference. Yeah. The, the... I don't know if this would actually be spookier than the yeah. Genesis theme. Player, pull up the, uh, the Immortal Genesis theme and... Compare the the delightful difference. Yes, master. Yes, oh, master. There we go. Ooh. Oh, it's like trying to get that Genesis yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, grunge. Yeah, there's a bass. huge quality difference. All right, let me look up. So you want me to look up the immortal ending on the Genesis? Yeah, it actually might be in one of my picks. Yeah, title theme is it's the same, basically the same track. Type an OST and then pull up the list. I can point out which one it is. I was about to say, I feel like that is a different song. They're very, very similar. All right, wherever this ends up getting cut to, uh, <laughs> this doesn't make a fucking lick of sense. Uh, so, yeah. The Immortal! Woo! Yeah, it's the Immortal! Spooky. The original one was good. The Genesis, I don't know. I think there's always something nice about the Genesis tone when it comes to that lower tone or that that those lower notes those lower instruments um that have a spooky nature to them spooky mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah that god scary Ugh. so are you spooked colin what's your number one number three my number one number three is from xeno gears and it is Some the track detect. omen which really is just kind of like the essence of the game to me is in this track and uh i don't know what's spoopier uh listening to this music or trying to jump up the shitty tower of babel <laughs> while, while you're uh, listening 2D to this platforming music. <laughs> yeah in a 3d environment that's also a pretty spoopy time but uh th- it, it, this is it's i don't know it's kind of unsettling and mm. uh spoopy and uh the whole soundtrack is really great for xeno gears and all of it's kind of spoopy but this is the spoopiest Except for maybe Griff's. It's a lot of spoopy.
That was a. Uh, that was good. My ego is spooked, mm-hmm. and my id, and all my Freudian states. <laughs> it's a very, very somber, very kind of. It's a. It's a creepy boy. I say, imagine like going into some weird cavern and having to climb up a stupid tower and. But that tavern is just called the video game called Xenogears. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. Um, uh, again, I think that uh, in the Xenosaga pick that I played earlier, you have that kind of like those those orchestral... They're not orc hits in the classic Super Nintendo orc hit where it's like that. <laughs> uh, there's like a unique oh, sound that, that Mitsuda again? can create, which has that like... It's like a hollow bell is what I think of it as. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, and I, I that to me... Is probably why I picked my track as well. There's also chimes. Uh, there's also... Um, I'll just turn this up here for a second again. There's almost just a single note as the bass layer that is constantly playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of like creating this foreboding feeling. Um, I love this song. I love all of Xenogear's songs. It's so good. We love you too, Griff. It's so spectacular. And speaking of spectacular Xenogear songs, let's listen to another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, it's another one. Uh, so, yeah, um, uh, for my number one, number three, number one, spookiest. Uh, Wait, Sulfur X? Yeah. And it's Xenogear. X equals Xenogears. We're going to listen to another song from Xenogears, and this one's called <laughs> The One Who Is Torn Apart. And I hope it's not the same song. I really hope it's the same song. Rats. So we got another three minutes to keep building here if uh, we want to go that way. But uh, yeah, another very ominous, impending doom uh, song from Yatsunari Mitsuda uh, featured in the video game Xena Gears. Uh, personal favorite of mine, um, again, much like Colin's previous track, The Omen, um, that underlying single note uh, like bass track or I don't even know what you want to call that but just there like laying that foundation of of unnerving and then the slow like progression as well as this like Gene I think you called this out earlier like this kind of like Jason like chant like Michael Myers it's it, it, yeah Halloween esque like the the cha 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 <sighs> like well, the, you're the, getting that that simple progression in the back end of that da 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 it's, da there's da, something always coming da, and it's da, getting da, closer da, no matter da, how fast you run away but I think the chimes and the bells do a great job of that echo it makes you feel like you're utterly alone and there's something coming mm-hmm. yeah very well said and that I think is like the the 
<laughs> that that is Xenogears, right? <laughs> What's not coming is Rico into my party lineup. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, true. Very because true. he yeah. sucks yeah, ass. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that dude. Big old boner. That fucking fake ass fake Blanca, Blanca can just go. <laughs> get wrecked discount a good generic block <laughs> dollar store blanca sewer blanca <laughs> all right some leftover towels and shit here's blanca <laughs> um let's see here uh so that concludes our lineup of all of our most important favorite things uh that that that, that reach the ranking levels of the spoopy factors um do you, so from here on out it's all going to be honorable mentions and things that we just want to highlight that are funsies Okay. So, honorable mention. Do you have something that you would like to add? I absolutely do. Well, I mean, we're resident, waiting. Like, person who pulls random Sega games that nobody's ever heard of. Did you say Resident Evil? No. Oh. No. <laughs> no. This is a game for the Sega Genesis, like virtually everything else that I pick. It's a game that likely you've never heard of. It's Chakan the Forever Man. You would be correct. In fact, you may have just made this game up right now. <laughs> it's a great game. It was made on the on the Mac Flashpoint Power. What's it they called? Hyper Deck. Hyper what Studio. Was a Hyper Deck. Is that like a triple decker upper Blumpkin? That's what. <laughs> that's what they use on the Enterprise. The Hyper Deck. The mm-hmm. Hyper Deck. So let's listen to this Hyper Deck. And this is a real game. This is a real game, and it's a great game. The premise is you're a fighter or some swordsman who bests death. Wasn't there a Nicolas Cage movie that looked like that? That's not Ghost Rider. No, the other one. The one where he was like, had a Gatling gun in the Wild West. What? Yeah. I don't know. No? Who is Shikan? Shikan? Uh, he was the best swordsman who bested death himself, but instead of winning immortality, he was given... I don't remember the full story, but... So ended... slap base? Not, not to be confused wow. with Shao Kahn. Oh, okay. No, it's... I don't remember. It's like you have or to... Or Shakira. Or Shakira. Shakira. As in, these hips don't lie. Mm-hmm. These blades don't lie. Yeah, basically you best death, and then you have to go through various elemental portals to kill other beings to create a potion to bring yourself back and then you fight death and become death again and this is a 15 minute song no it's this is the extent it just repeats on this oh, okay. shit you can, okay. you can move on Bela. nothing to see here okay, okay. I don't know there's a lot of bass a lot of slappy slappy bass hmm. we have any more uh, Zeno gears you guys want to play I oh, don't yeah, have any more Zeno gears all of the entire soundtrack I mean, we could just have a Xenogears podcast because it's that good. Or you could just go listen to the Xenogears soundtrack and Which not you should listen do. to our stupid voices. That's also true. Uh-huh. Our voices are dumb and bad. Well, Billy. Really. You want to do one, Colin? Yeah, so I got one here. I didn't. I never really considered how creepy and weird this soundtrack was until I started looking into music for this podcast. But uh, Super Metroid. <laughs> Super Almond Milk. Super Almond Milk, the game. Uh, the the music for the Meridia area is creepy and spoopy. That's just the way it is. Hmm. Yeah. 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 It's just creepy music. Creepy music. You're underwater. There's creepy shit going on. I know one of the rules that we had for this was, like, no soundscapes. And I think a lot of Metroid music is very much soundscape. That's why I didn't put this in. Uh, but this one almost feels elevated from soundscape. Mm-hmm. There's a little more going on here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, I thought the Forest Temple was creepy, but that's more of a soundscape. It is eerie for sure. Mm-hmm. say spooky <gasps> and there are creepy purple pirate boys down there creepy purple pirate boys send shivers down my spine do you have something you would like to add griff about this song or just another song yeah we got another song i can play here 
So I don't know if you heard this little game from Nintendo called uh, Luigi's Mash Home. Who's Luigi? I fucking knew it. He was uh, the the less liked of the two bros. Mario! Mario! And that's pretty much the only reason why this song is good. Um, <laughs> is I tried to look into this to see if this was if this was Charles Martinet like doing this portion of the song because it's it's the the we're gonna listen to the the main theme from Luigi's Mansion which I thought it was the ending theme um, <laughs> and by the end of it like Luigi is getting more and more scared and terrified and you can hear it in how he is humming along with the main theme mm-hmm. um, to a point where you know it's like it becomes Almost unlistenable. <laughs> <laughs> but to think that, like, Charles Martinet, who's a voice actor, uh, voices the majority of the Mario characters, uh, is is in a booth, like, having to hum along with the, with the soundtrack and getting progressively more unnerved. I just love that idea. So let's play this. <laughs> real regular dude. It's like seventy years old. He's trying to give some ghosts the suck. This makes me think of every time I was like six years old and I had to go downstairs into the basement at night to get some mundane object, and I'm like, "There's nothing scary down there." You lived Luigi's Mansion. Uh-huh. There's nothing scary down there. Right. I'm just going to keep on talking to myself that way. Everything's going to be fine. Everything will be fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm breaking down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would let this one play through because it just, by the it's end of it, silly. it's so good. <laughs> the, the song itself is just that kind of classic old horror movie campy creepiness it's going nowhere fast it's just, it's just yeah, very just, tedious plotting it's like you're in a haunted house right. this is the music that plays whenever but, you're in a haunted house Luigi is whispering sweet nothings into my ear right now mm-hmm, he sure is was it Charles Martinet that did this? I couldn't find out <laughs> Luigi think about baseball <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh god Oh Luigi This is like ghost This is so gooey <laughs> It's ectoplasm I swear Oh god Get him a towel Yeah so Not, not a great song But I just love that Vocalization of Being scared Through a song I get you Nintendo game You don't get those every day You know what I'm saying Back in my day uh, all right. Uh, I think that brings us back around the horn to Gene. Do you want another one? I think I'm good. I have a couple more, but maybe repeats of similar stuff. So okay, I think I'm good. I'd just like to mention the game Eternal Darkness has a lot of good music in it, but I have one on my list, but I feel, again, it's one where it's only scary in the context of while you're playing Eternal Darkness. Hmm. So I didn't put it higher. Uh, if you want to throw one more on, though, you can play the Threed song from Earthbound. Okay. Which, again, this one kind of gets close to a borderline soundscape kind of thing. But it's also just it's a spooky song. This is when the Zambies are there. I'm three. so happy that you gave me the link for the 30-minute version. <laughs> oh, oh well, yeah. We listened to all of it, right? Yep. Oh, we really are. I'll see you later. Oh god The virus has escaped There are zombies They're coming up for us Just your standard creepy, weird, earthbound shit here. Mm-hmm. This makes me think of like what could this call? A movie made back like Night of the Living Dead, where this is kind of like the cheesy, spooky background mm-hmm. noise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the aliens came. Right. Something's on a string being, de- being dangled down in front of the screen. 
So he's got a slide whistle or a theremin. Ooh, you know that thing? Oh, like the like a kazoo? It's like an no, it's like looks like an antenna, and like it's just you play with like the oscilloscope. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is spooky, though. I think there's a lot of spooky music in Earth. There is. Yeah. The when the meteor first crashes in Onet. Mm -hmm. I remember that being kind of nervous. This one just jumped out to me because obviously we have zombies there, yeah. so it's just innately spooky. All right, yeah, yeah. Per the holiday customs, especially think of zombies ate my neighbors, which doesn't have a lot of spooky. It really music doesn't. In. It's a pretty cheery game. It sure is. It's done like a sarcastic, like spin on the typical sounds you'd hear in like old horror movies. It's but none of it's spooky. Like I, that's why I love that game because it doesn't fall into that trapping of like... Oh, it's a satire of itself. <sighs> oh, it's so good. We should figure out how to put that in this. Speaking of which, uh, that'll probably wrap it up for us uh, here in Boss Barrel Central Basement. <laughs> um, that was our number one, three, two, two, four, th one, three. And then I ended with number 11. And oh, then okay. number 11. Yeah. The best number. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, per our standard custom, we are going to commit to the next episode, which I think is going to be sad music. We're actually doing an eight hour special. Eight hour special. Eight hour Shut special. up, Colin. Get your razor blades out. Oh, baby. Yeah. Um, put your, put your belt dress on. Uh, -huh. uh get your black eyeliner out. Uh, Already take on. Take your antidepressant now and get it over with. Oh, no, put your extra depressant on because it's going to be sad as f AF. AF as fire. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm already depressed. Uh, yeah, so thanks for listening. Uh, this has been uh, Boss Bro Radio. Um, <laughs> I've been Griffin Hoffman. Gene Sofer Jr. Colin Connett. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Jr. Happy October, everybody. Uh, Have a spoopy, safe Halloween. Don't eat the razor blade candy. Nothing spoopier than razor blade candy. Remember, candy from strangers is the best candy. That's actually true. Because it's free. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Except for that fucker down the street who gives you an apple. Or yeah, pennies. Fuck that guy. Or no pennies. Like that guy. Yeah. Who the hell gives like out a penny, pennies? young man? At Can I point, eat it? Is it covered in chocolate? You could eat the penny. I could. Maybe that's why I turned out the way I am. I ate the pennies it. from the guy down the street. Yeah, give out a bunch of paint yeah, chips. Here you go, kids. <laughs> <laughs>